Let's say you just bought Rocket League. You download the game, you install it, and you excitedly launch it ready to play. The game launches and you're ready to go and start the tutorial. You finally load in and what's this? To a brand new player this looks completely normal. To a Rocket League veteran and even most amateurs this is just hideous to look at. So what's wrong with it? Well in case you don't already know it's uh well just about everything. If you've played Rocket League for a decent bit you've probably seen this screen before. It's the camera settings. It's arguably the most important screen when you first start playing, mainly because of this checkbox right here. If you have camera shake on, turn it off right now, please. This is the worst setting you can play on. I'd rather play with no boost at all than with camera shake on, seriously. And apparently Psyonix thought it was a good idea to keep it on by default. Basically, with camera shake on, every time you jump, bump into something, score a goal, anything that causes rapid movement of your car, your camera is gonna shake all over the place. This makes it just harder to hit the ball, see what's going on, do anything at all really. Alright, you got that unchecked? Okay, good. Now let's move on to what this video is actually about, which is the importance of your camera. So I know this can be somewhat of a boring topic to some players, but I know for a fact if you fix your camera settings alone, it can really boost you to the next level. I first came up with this idea when I was analyzing replays at various levels of play for my last video. At Platinum and Gold, I'd see some players with super far camera settings and some players with really close ones. But by the time I got up to GC replays, most players had pretty similar settings. So without a doubt, if you really want to get good at this game, you're going to end up changing your settings to something somewhat close to what everyone at GC is using. So you might as well just change them now. And let me just clarify that changing your settings to Squishies or Justins isn't going to make you play like them. You'll still suck, you'll just suck a little bit less. Okay, just had to get that out of the way. If you've been told by someone that your camera settings are awful, they're probably right. You may think, oh, they just match my playstyle, which has some truth to it, but it's not enough of an excuse to have your camera 50 feet back from your car. Before I go any further, let me explain what each of these settings do. Field of view, or FOV as some call it, is basically how zoomed in or zoomed out your camera is. Not to be confused with how far forward or back it is. If you have a more zoomed in FOV, everything on your screen will appear normal in shape, but you won't be able to see as much. If your FOV is zoomed out, you'll be able to see way more on your screen, but around the edges you can see it gets kind of stretched out a little. Most pros have their FOV at the max or close to it because the edges are mainly for their peripheral vision anyway, so the fact it's warped a bit doesn't really matter. Distance is how far away the camera is to your car. If you turn this way up, your camera will be way far back, so you'll be able to see more, but it'll be harder to be more precise with your car control. When you turn it down, you'll be in much more control over your car, but you'll be less aware of what's happening around you. Most pros use a distance anywhere from 250 to 290, so it's a pretty small margin to choose from. Height is somewhat similar to distance, but it only changes how low or high it is. In the same way, if your height is higher, you won't be as precise, and if your height is lower, you won't be able to see as much. Most pros use a height somewhere from 90 to 110, so again, that's a pretty small margin. Your angle is what determines how far pointed down your camera is, so the more negative it is, the further it'll be pointed down. Most pros use somewhere from negative 3 to negative 5 for the angle, but it's not that strict of a rule. Next up is the stiffness. This determines how strict your camera will be to following your car when you're not on ball cam. So basically, if your stiffness is zero, which is the minimum, your car will be way over to the side of your screen when you're power sliding, and it'll look way farther from the camera when you're at max speed. When your stiffness is one, which is the max, your camera will be directly behind your car no matter how jagged your movement or how much you power slide. This setting is really 100% preference. Some pros like Lethemir use max stiffness and others use zero stiffness. It's really just whatever you feel like is the best. I recommend testing them both out on your own for a while and then make a decision for what you like best. Next up is the swivel speed. This just determines how fast your camera moves when you move it around manually. A low swivel speed means it moves around slower and it's more stiff, but a high swivel speed means it moves around almost instantly. Most pros use a swivel speed of 4 or higher, but again, it's all preference. Lastly, we've got transition speed. This one is really all preference as well. The only thing this changes is how fast your camera transitions from car cam to ball cam. If it's at the minimum, it'll transition the slowest, which isn't even really that slow. If it's at the max, it'll transition instantly without the camera really moving at all. It's pretty much just a jump cut at that point. Pros really use any range of these. Some put it at max and some put it at minimum. It's 100% what they feel most comfortable with, so there's not really any way to choose a bad transition speed. Just choose whatever you like the best. 
Now that you know what all these settings actually mean, I recommend starting out with the camera settings of a pro that you think has a similar playstyle to you. So if you think Squishy plays the same way as you, go ahead and try out his settings and then make very small adjustments over a long period of time until you feel comfortable. It's important not to choose someone's settings and then change a bunch of stuff right away. Try and get used to them for a few days and if there's still an aspect that you don't like, change that by just a little bit and then go from there. But remember to stay within the bounds of what most pros use, don't go too far from the norm. I'll leave a link in the description of a giant list for what all the pros camera settings are. You can look through there and pick one you like. People often ask me what my camera settings are and I don't always like telling people about them because according to most they are really bad but they fit my playstyle so I really like them. I have a pretty unique playstyle so I have pretty unique camera settings. Basically I think I'm very mechanical with dribbling, flicks, air dribbling, and passes. These skills often require very precise car controls so I like to have my camera really close to my car. These are my settings on screen now. So you can see I have 200 distance which is really close and it allows me to be much more mechanical. But I also have zero stiffness which makes my camera seem not as close as it really is because when I'm moving fast the camera is way further from the car than it is when I'm just stationary. So that pretty much makes up for my distance being so close. If you really want to try my settings out you can go ahead but be aware that I do not recommend them for most people. So there's two extremes basically with changing up your camera settings. First, some players put their camera way up high and have a really deep camera angle looking down on the field. Yes, this does help you see your surroundings easier, but knowing that there's no one around you isn't going to help you make that save. With camera settings like these, you have no perception of the height you need to hit the ball correctly. That's an essential skill to have, so it's not worth it to change your camera settings anywhere near these. On the contrary, some people use settings that are really low to the ground and have a really small angle. These settings are completely OP for reading the height and position on the ball which makes double taps really easy. However, what it gives up is the ability to know how far away the ball is from your car which makes it really hard to dribble. You'll find the ball tipping off your nose often with these settings. Also, a lot of the time the ball will be hidden behind your car so you can't even see exactly what's going on. When I was experimenting with these settings, I couldn't tell what the ball was going to bounce off which made double taps harder in the end. So overall, don't put these settings to the extreme if you want to play competitively. It's not worth it for the skills that you're giving up. So that's it! When you first start out in Rocket League, there's a ton of settings you need to change and camera settings are just a small portion of them. The default controls are also pretty bad, so I might make a video on that as well. What do you think is the most important thing for new players to learn? Let me know in the comments or on Twitter. And if you want to see more videos like these, please subscribe for more, leave a comment if you enjoyed, and I will see you later. Thanks!